Hi, I'm going to talk about my composing and musicianship history. Okay, if some people wanted to know when I started with piano and keyboards, that would be when I was around 13. But if you want to know my earlier time when I did drums and singing and did songs like that, we're talking about either late 69, 1969 or 1970 when I really started officially to write songs. The earliest influence, even though I liked the Beatles a lot, my earliest influence was maybe something like, do you know the group The Fifth Dimension? And they had the song Stone Soul Picnic that Laura Nairo did. I remember listening to that on the 45, and that was a cool song. It was like, come on down to a stone soul picnic, come on down. And it was really cool. And I also liked Up, Up, and Away by that group. They were cool. I liked that soulful orchestration type of stuff. And I also liked the Jackson 5, A, B, C... Da da one two three, da da A B C one two three A B C baby you and me girl, and they had some really cool stuff, and I liked their stuff too, and I want you back. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to tell you that I love you. Ooh 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 ooh. Da, 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 I want you back. You know, stuff like that. They were cool. So I was totally into that stuff. And I also looked at Bob Dylan's songbook and I noticed his lyrics were interesting. So I would read his lyrics. I also liked his music too, but... The lyrics influenced me when I was writing stuff because his song A Hard Days A Gonna Fall had a lot of lyrics and that influenced me when I wrote a song back when I was about six called Alley Monday. It went, Alley Monday, tell me what you're going to do. Alley Monday, tell me what you're going to do. And it was <coughs> um, kind of like a 20-minute song or so. And I still do it occasionally. I never forgot it because I kept playing it and I kept changing the lyrics around, but... And then I had the song Cat Allowance, which the chorus went, Cat Allowance, dun dun dun, dun Cat Allowance, dun, dun, dun. there's Monkey Allowance and Zebra Allowance and Stork Allowance and Mongoose Allowance, but no Cat Allowance, dun dun dun, dun. Cat Allowance, dun dun dun, dun. you know, and, and, and it was just um, kind of like, um, you know, stuff like that. And there was a song that I wrote called And Many More, because whenever you would get Grace Hits albums from people, like let's say a group, whatever group you're talking about, they might list on the front cover a few songs that are their Grace Hits, and then they would say, and many more. And what they meant was there were also other songs, so and many more songs on the album. But I decided... Hey, if I had an album and it had all the songs listed and they put and many more, it would be because that was a song on the album. And it goes like, I saw the monkeys and the trees, the birds and the bees, and many more. 
and many more. I saw da 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 and many more and many more, and you know, and then later on, groups like BT Express and Sly Stone they kind of influenced me a little bit later. And I did something, Mr. Music Man, and Mr. Music Man, and then they give me your music, make me dance, oh, Mr. Music Man, or Mr. Music Man, you know, stuff like that. So, a lot of the soul groups influenced me. And I listened to a lot of the hard rock and stuff like that, but... They were a little more just for listening. But Stevie Wonder had a great songwriting style. And he influenced me too. The stuff he did in Motown and his own stuff. He was a good songwriter and good influence. So, those were my different influences. And... In classical, stuff like Bartok was interesting. And, I mean, I, I played my share of Chopin, which helped me with my fingering on the piano and keyboards when I do fast stuff. And a little Bach and Beethoven, but I like Schubert, no, Schumann better. And... You know, I, I haven't, I, I didn't really play much of Schubert, but he was okay. But, um, you know, um, uh, yeah, Schumann was pretty good. I liked him. He, he did, um, some interesting stuff. And so, of course, the Beatles songbook. I had the complete Beatles, and I would play that, and that helped me with my rhythm and stuff when I was in piano. You know, and so that, and there was also Walter Stewart's jazz book that I played, and and they had, like, different jazz versions of songs that you wouldn't ordinarily think of as being jazz, but it opened up my mind to a lot of possibilities in music. And so... Those are my early influences. Now, when it comes to writing a song, um, I don't necessarily just do one thing. Sometimes I'll just improvise and just do it on the spot. Other times I have an idea and I write it specifically from the start to the finish. Some songs I would test on the keyboard and then write down as I go along. I usually would start to play something and then write it down. I wouldn't necessarily think of a tune first and then try to find it. I mean, if I did that, then I usually did stuff on my drum and my humming and stuff and didn't really write down that stuff for keyboard, but the keyboard stuff was a little more, I, I would search for different combinations of chords and notes, and then write down stuff that seemed right. And nowadays, when I'm doing some of my other work, my classical compositions or whatnot, I have an app that can transcribe it to score music. And then from there, I have another app where I can edit it and change the instruments and add stuff. And so I help help now, which is really, really a convenience because it might take 10 minutes to get a piece completely done as opposed to like a couple of hours you know so it's really really 
a convenience for me to work that way. So a lot of the stuff that I've done that you see on YouTube that is my compositions on sheet music, that's because I've had help with the apps and stuff. And when it comes to words, well, when it comes to if I write like prose pieces, like novels or short stories, then I'm a little more concerned about what I'm saying. But nowadays, unless I'm writing a song on paper, the words to it, a lot of the stuff that I've done on YouTube is me improvising, thinking of what I can think of at the spur of the moment. But since I've written songs since I was, you know, at least for 50 years, I think I kind of can do it on the spur of the moment. And... I can write even more songs. I mean, I I don't have any limit as far as how much I can write. I find nowadays that I am not as interested in a lot of rock music because I've already heard a lot of the great rock music. But I still like rock music. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that I don't. But I would rather listen to some classical or some jazz music. But when I'm talking jazz, I'm not talking that plastic sounding wallpaper Oh, Muffy, let's serve people clam dip and have this, you know, fake music in the background kind of stuff. I'm, I'm talking more stuff like, you know, avant-garde jazz or older traditional stuff that's, you know, cool, you know, so... Ornette Coleman, uh, Miles Davis, when he was good, um, you know, stuff like Dave Liebman, Lookout Farm, Chick Corea, and Gary Burton, and, um, you know, and Cecil Taylor, some of Sun Ra is pretty cool. And Dave Holland and various people. You know, I could probably think of more names. But if you start with those names, you can look for yourself for connections as to who they worked with and whatever other groups you can find. That's one thing. The reason why I know so much about a lot of music is because I would read different record reviews and different things about the different artists. And I was interested in it. And so my interest led me to search for stuff. So I'm not really someone who will buy a 180 gram album that's a new pressing. I would rather, if I were to get an album, go to a used record shop or a thrift store and get an original copy for um, maybe a couple of dollars, maybe five dollars at the most or something, but for the most part, I listen to stuff on streaming. I don't think that physical media is that much of a big deal for me. The, the only time that I now usually buy any new music is if I see a group live and then I want to support them by buying their music, then I'll do it. 
but otherwise I don't usually go out to buy physical media. I only do it now mostly if it's a group that I connect with well, but I also can put out CDs of my music. So if anyone ever wanted to have a CD of my music, they could let me know and I could arrange for that type of deal. But I'm also not caring whether or not you listen to it on YouTube or wherever, you know, you can you can listen to it however you want to listen to it. I'm I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not someone who says you have to buy my product in order to like it. You know, you can listen to it for free and it's as long as you have an opinion and you tell me your opinion, that's payment enough. I don't need necessarily a lot uh, I mean, I don't necessarily need five more dollars or ten more dollars just to sell one CD. I mean, if 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 a thousand people started to buy my work and then I was able to get a significant amount of money, then that would be different. Then I might start thinking in terms of, wow, this is pretty lucrative. But as far as just a... Oh, I got 20 more dollars this month. Wow. I mean, who cares? You know, I mean, I'll, I'll sell you my work, but you can listen to it for free. You know, I, I don't care. You know, I'm not that big selling artist. And the thing about me being an outsider artist, I don't like that term. I mean... I know that it's meant in a good way, but just because my voice isn't the best voice for singing, that's not on purpose. You know, people don't call Frank Zappa an outsider because he was well known. They only call people outsiders if they're not that well known. And so in that way, I am. I am an outsider, but I I, I prefer to call myself, you know, maybe um, avant-garde, kind of. I I, I would say I, I, I would prefer the term interesting, like, or... I don't even know if alternative is a good word. I'd say I am more of an individual songwriter type. Individual. That's that's maybe a better term. Or um untraditional. And un or unconventional maybe. But but I would say, uh, you know, um, how about uncategorical? That that that's a good term, or like, um, out of the artists who are uncategorical. That that's a good term, because that means I can do whatever. And um, or how about versatile? versatile that's that's the best a versatile musician or eclectic versatile or eclectic that's that's a good term to use for me cuz outsider sounds like i'm trying to come into a party and they're not letting me in it so sort of shuts me out makes me feel i'm not included and so i don't like that term I want to be included. I want to be considered a part of the gang. But if you need to think of me as an outsider musician, I can't stop you. 
especially if you mean it well, I take it okay. But I would think of myself as an eclectic musician, which means I can do various different types of stuff, and I don't follow one particular path. But anyway, yeah, so I don't know if I got on all the points that were wondered about by people, but that's basically me. I, I can definitely turn people on to music that I think they ought to hear and different composers and stuff. But that's up to them. I I am definitely annoyed at people who have narrow minds and who only want to hear one song and don't care about anything else. If you're going to buy an album, no matter what album it is, you might as well hear the whole album, not just the hit that you bought it for. You might as well buy a single in that terminology. It doesn't do you any good to have 10 songs on an album if you're not going to hear 9 of them. But that's my opinion. But I, I do think it's a good opinion. Anyway, this has been me talking about music. Cheers. Cheers.